Book Review Outliers by Malcolm Gladwell Malcolm Gladwell's Outliers is a captivating exploration of success and the factors that contribute to exceptional achievements. With his signature blend of storytelling and social science research, Gladwell delves into the lives of extraordinary individuals and unveils hidden patterns that differentiate them from the average. Throughout the book's thought-provoking chapters, Gladwell challenges conventional beliefs about success, emphasizing the importance of context, culture, and opportunity. Let's dive into each chapter and explore the major action points presented in Outliers. Chapter 1. The Matthew Effect In Outliers, Malcolm Gladwell introduces the concept of the Matthew Effect and explores how accumulated advantages can significantly impact success. The term is derived from a biblical verse that states, For unto everyone that hath shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath. Essentially, this means that those who already possess advantages or resources tend to accumulate even more, while those without advantages can fall further behind. Gladwell illustrates this phenomenon through various real-life examples. One such example is the story of Canadian ice hockey players. He points out that a disproportionate number of elite hockey players in Canada are born in the first few months of the year. The reason behind this lies in the age eligibility cutoff for youth hockey leagues. In Canada, the cutoff date is January 1st, which means that a child born in January will be almost a full year older than a child born in December of the same year when they start playing hockey. At a young age, this age difference provides an inherent advantage to the children born in January. They are more physically mature and coordinated than their younger peers. Coaches and scouts tend to notice these early developing children and provide them with better coaching and more opportunities for development. As a result, they improve at a faster rate compared to their younger counterparts. This early advantage accumulates over time, leading to a significant overrepresentation of January born players in elite hockey leagues. An example of someone in real life who exemplifies the concept of the Matthew effect is Serena Williams, one of the greatest tennis players of all time. From a young age, Serena and her sister Venus Williams showed remarkable talent and potential in tennis. Their father, Richard Williams, recognized their gifts and dedicated himself to their training and development. Despite facing financial challenges and navigating a predominantly white sport, Richard ensured that his daughters received the best coaching and opportunities to excel. The Williams sisters' early advantage, which included exceptional coaching and focused practice, allowed them to develop their skills rapidly. Their success on the tennis court attracted more sponsorships and media attention, which further boosted their careers. As a result, Serena Williams became one of the most dominant players in tennis history, with numerous Grand Slam titles and a lasting impact on the sport. The example of Serena Williams demonstrates how the Matthew effect can play out in real life. Her early advantages in coaching and support paved the way for her extraordinary success on the tennis court. However, it's essential to remember that the Matthew effect is not solely about talent or inherent abilities, but about how access to opportunities and resources can significantly impact an individual's journey to success. Gladwell's exploration of the Matthew Effect encourages readers to reflect on the environments and circumstances that have influenced their own paths in life. By understanding the power of accumulated advantages, we can strive to create more equitable opportunities for everyone, ensuring that talent and potential are not hindered by the lack of access to resources and opportunities. Moreover, by recognizing the influence of context and support on success, we can foster environments that allow individuals to flourish and reach their full potential, regardless of their starting point. Chapter 2 The 10,000-Hour Rule 
In Chapter 2 of Outliers, Malcolm Gladwell introduces the fascinating concept of the 10,000-hour rule. He proposes that achieving mastery in any field requires approximately 10,000 hours of deliberate practice. This rule challenges the notion of innate talent and suggests that greatness is attainable through dedicated and focused effort. Gladwell draws on the research of psychologist Anders Ericsson, who studied the practice habits of exceptional performers in various domains, such as music, sports, and chess. Erickson's work revealed that the most accomplished individuals in their respective fields had accumulated a staggering amount of practice hours before achieving greatness. Whether it was the Beatles honing their craft in Hamburg's clubs or Bill Gates gaining early access to computers, these exceptional individuals invested substantial time in refining their skills. It's essential to note that the quality of practice matters just as much as the quantity. Deliberate practice involves intense, purposeful efforts aimed at improving specific aspects of performance. It often involves seeking feedback, pushing oneself beyond comfort zones, and constantly refining techniques. A real-life example of the 10,000-hour rule is the legendary basketball player, Michael Jordan. Jordan's path to greatness was marked by relentless dedication and an unyielding commitment to improvement. While he had shown talent and athleticism from an early age, it was his work ethic and drive that set him apart from his peers. Jordan spent countless hours honing his basketball skills, even in the off-season. He was known for arriving at the gym early and staying late, tirelessly practicing his shots, footwork, and defensive moves. His focus on deliberate practice allowed him to continuously refine his game and overcome his weaknesses. Jordan's famous flu game during the 1997 NBA Finals is a testament to his commitment to excellence. Despite being severely ill, he led the Chicago Bulls to victory with a heroic performance, demonstrating his mental toughness and preparation. This level of greatness could only be achieved through years of dedicated practice and an unshakable desire to be the best. The example of Michael Jordan illustrates that natural talent alone is insufficient to reach the pinnacle of success. While his physical attributes were extraordinary, it was his unwavering commitment to deliberate practice that propelled him to become one of the greatest basketball players of all time. Gladwell's exploration of the 10,000-hour rule encourages readers to view success as a product of continuous effort and dedication. It challenges the notion of overnight success and reminds us that true greatness is forged through consistent, focused practice over an extended period. Applying the 10,000-hour rule to our own lives, we can embrace deliberate practice in our chosen endeavors, whether it's learning a musical instrument, excelling in a sport, or mastering a skill. By dedicating ourselves to the pursuit of excellence and recognizing the transformative power of consistent effort, we can unlock our potential and achieve extraordinary feats, just like the outliers who have come before us. Chapter 3 The Trouble with Geniuses, Part 1 in this chapter of Outliers, Malcolm Gladwell delves into the relationship between intelligence and success, challenging the conventional belief that high IQ alone guarantees exceptional achievements. He introduces readers to the story of Christopher Langan, a man with an extraordinary IQ and immense intellectual potential. Christopher Langan's life serves as an intriguing case study for exploring the concept of practical intelligence. He possessed a staggeringly high IQ, estimated to be around 195, higher than that of Albert Einstein. However, despite his exceptional cognitive abilities, Langan's life did not unfold as one might expect. He faced significant challenges in realizing his full potential and achieving notable success. Gladwell argues that intelligence, while undoubtedly important, is not the sole determinant of success. Practical intelligence, characterized by the ability to navigate real-life situations effectively, plays a crucial role in one's journey to greatness. 
Practical intelligence encompasses a range of skills, including social acumen, adaptability, problem solving, and the ability to seize opportunities. A new example of someone in real life who exemplifies the importance of practical intelligence is Oprah Winfrey. Despite not having an exceptionally high IQ, Oprah's life story is a testament to her exceptional practical intelligence and resilience. Born into poverty in rural Mississippi, Oprah faced numerous challenges throughout her early life. However, she displayed remarkable interpersonal skills and emotional intelligence from a young age. These qualities allowed her to connect with others, express herself articulately, and empathize with people's struggles and aspirations. Oprah's early experiences in broadcasting and media paved the way for her future success. Her talk show, The Oprah Winfrey Show, became a massive hit, and she used her platform to address meaningful social issues, inspire her viewers, and advocate for positive change. Oprah's practical intelligence allowed her to build a vast network of influential connections and seize opportunities that aligned with her vision and values. Beyond her talk show, Oprah ventured into various endeavors, such as launching her own television network, OWN, and establishing a successful magazine, O, oh, The Oprah Magazine. She also became an accomplished actress and producer, earning critical acclaim and accolades for her performances. Oprah's ability to connect with diverse audiences, adapt to evolving media landscapes, and make informed decisions in both her personal and professional life underscores the power of practical intelligence. While her IQ might not be off the charts, her emotional intelligence, empathy, and savvy decision-making have played pivotal roles in her remarkable achievements. The example of Oprah Winfrey reinforces Gladwell's argument that practical intelligence, in combination with high cognitive abilities, can lead to exceptional success. Intelligence alone does not guarantee greatness. It is the ability to understand and navigate the complexities of the world effectively that sets individuals like Oprah apart. As readers reflect on the concept of practical intelligence, they can apply this understanding to their own lives. Developing emotional intelligence, interpersonal skills, and adaptability can complement cognitive abilities and significantly impact their paths to success. By recognizing the value of practical intelligence and nurturing these skills, Individuals can strive for more balanced and holistic approaches to achieving their goals, just as exemplified by Oprah Winfrey. Chapter 4, The Trouble with Geniuses, Part 2 In the continuation of his exploration of intelligence and success in Outliers, Malcolm Gladwell presents the story of the Termites, a group of profoundly gifted individuals with IQs above 150. The termites were identified and studied as children with extraordinary potential, and their academic and professional achievements were expected to be nothing short of exceptional. However, as Gladwell delves deeper into the lives of the termites, he reveals that not all of them fulfilled the lofty expectations placed upon them. Despite their immense cognitive abilities, some termites did not achieve the level of success anticipated based on their early promise. This finding leads Gladwell to question the prevailing assumptions about intelligence and its direct correlation to achievement. The story of William Seedes is one of the most remarkable examples in this chapter. William Seedes, often referred to as the smartest man in the world, had an IQ estimated to be around 250 to 300, one of the highest ever recorded. He was a child prodigy who displayed exceptional talents in multiple fields, including mathematics, languages, and literature. At an early age, Cetes captured the public's attention with his extraordinary intellectual feats. He entered Harvard University at just 11 years old and completed his studies with distinction. However, as he grew older, Cetes faced challenges in adapting to the expectations and pressures of the world around him. 
Despite his remarkable intelligence, he struggled to find a sense of fulfillment and contentment in life. Cetes' story exemplifies the complexities of intelligence and the challenges faced by individuals who possess exceptional cognitive abilities. While his IQ was off the charts, other factors, such as emotional well-being, societal pressures, and personal aspirations, played a significant role in shaping his journey. A real-life example of someone who embodies the nuances of intelligence and achievement is Stephen Hawking, the world-renowned theoretical physicist. Like William Seedes, Hawking displayed remarkable intellect from a young age. He had a profound interest in mathematics and physics, which he pursued with passion and dedication. Hawking's brilliance was evident during his academic career at the University of Oxford and the University of Cambridge. However, at the age of 21, he was diagnosed with a myotrophic lateral sclerosis, ALS, a motor neuron disease that gradually paralyzed him. Despite facing immense physical challenges, Hawking refused to be defined by his disability. Throughout his life, Hawking's practical intelligence, perseverance, and ability to adapt to his changing circumstances became evident. He continued his groundbreaking research on black holes and the nature of the universe, communicating through a speech-generating device. Hawking's contributions to theoretical physics were revolutionary, and he became one of the most influential scientists of his time. Stephen Hawking's example highlights that intelligence alone does not guarantee success or fulfillment. It is the ability to adapt, overcome adversity, and remain dedicated to one's passions that can lead to extraordinary achievements. Hawking's practical intelligence, resilience, and unwavering commitment to his work demonstrate that true greatness goes beyond raw cognitive abilities. Gladwell's exploration of the termites and the stories of William Seedes and Stephen Hawking urge readers to consider intelligence as a multidimensional trait. It's not only about cognitive prowess, but also about emotional intelligence, adaptability, and the pursuit of meaningful goals. By recognizing the multifaceted nature of intelligence, individuals can approach their own pursuits with a more comprehensive and balanced perspective, striving for both personal growth and genuine fulfillment, like Stephen Hawking did throughout his remarkable life. Chapter 5 The Three Lessons of Joe Flom In Chapter 5 of Outliers, Malcolm Gladwell explores the concept of cultural legacies and how they influence an individual's path to success. He illustrates this idea through the life story of Joe Flom, a highly successful lawyer who rose to prominence on Wall Street. Joe Flom was born into a working-class Jewish immigrant family in the early 20th century. His background was marked by adversity, discrimination, and limited access to opportunities. However, Gladwell argues that Flom's cultural legacy played a significant role in shaping his approach to life and work, ultimately contributing to his remarkable achievements. Gladwell identifies three key lessons from Joe Flom's life, which highlight the impact of cultural legacies on success. 1. The importance of working hard and seizing opportunities Joe Flom grew up in an environment that emphasized the value of hard work and perseverance. His parents, like many other Jewish immigrant families, instilled in him a strong work ethic and a belief in the power of education. These values motivated Flom to excel academically and take advantage of any opportunities that came his way. 2. The advantage of being an outsider as a Jewish immigrant Flom faced discrimination and limited opportunities in the traditional legal firms of the time. However, this outsider status also gave him a unique perspective and an ability to see opportunities where others might not. Flom recognized that there was a demand for legal services among small and medium-sized companies that were often ignored by larger firms. He seized this opportunity and co-founded Skadden, ARPs, Slate, Mar and Flom, a pioneering law firm that focused on serving these clients. 3. The power of a supportive community. 
Flom's success was not solely a result of his individual efforts, but also a product of the supportive community he belonged to. The Jewish immigrant community in New York City provided a tight-knit network of people who helped each other succeed. They shared information, resources, and connections, creating a collaborative environment that bolstered Flom's career. A new example of someone in real life who exemplifies the influence of cultural legacies on success is Indra Nui, the former CEO of PepsiCo. Nui was born in Chennai, India, and moved to the United States to pursue higher education at Yale University. She faced the challenges of adapting to a new culture and environment, but her cultural legacy and values played a crucial role in shaping her approach to leadership. Growing up in India, Nui was exposed to a culture that valued family, education, and community. These values became central to her leadership style. She demonstrated a commitment to supporting her employees' personal and professional development, fostering a sense of belonging and camaraderie within PepsiCo. Nui's ability to navigate different cultural contexts also became a significant asset for PepsiCo's global expansion. Her understanding of cultural nuances and her respect for diversity allowed the company to thrive in diverse markets worldwide. Indra Nui's life and achievements illustrate the impact of cultural legacies on an individual's path to success. Her upbringing in India instilled values that guided her leadership style and decision-making, while her ability to adapt to new cultural contexts allowed her to excel in the global business arena. Gladwell's exploration of Joe Flom and Indra Nui encourages readers to recognize the profound influence of cultural legacies on their lives and aspirations. By understanding the values and experiences that shape their perspectives and approaches to work and life, individuals can leverage these insights to foster their personal and professional growth. Embracing one's cultural heritage, values, and unique perspectives can be a source of strength and advantage in the pursuit of success, just as it was for Joe Flom and Indra Nui. Chapter 6. Harlan, Kentucky in Chapter 6 of Outliers, Malcolm Gladwell delves into the concept of cultural legacies and how they can shape behaviors and attitudes over time. He uses the example of Harlan, a small town in Kentucky with a history of violence and a culture of honor. Gladwell explores the roots of this culture and its impact on the town's residents. Gladwell points out that Harlan's culture of honor can be traced back to its early history as a coal mining town. In the 19th and early 20th centuries, coal mining was a dangerous and competitive industry. Miners had to protect their claims and livelihoods, often resorting to violence to defend their honor and reputation. Over time, this culture of honor became deeply ingrained in Harlan's social fabric. The concept of manliness and the need to respond to insults or challenges with aggression became central to the town's norms. This cultural legacy resulted in higher rates of violence and a reluctance to back down from conflicts, leading to a cycle of revenge and feuds. One of the most significant examples of this culture of honor in Harlan is the story of the Bowling family. The Bowling brothers, known for their fierce adherence to the culture of honor, were involved in a deadly feud with another family, the Howards. This feud, spanning several decades, claimed many lives and left a lasting impact on the town's psyche. Gladwell's exploration of Harlan's culture of honor raises important questions about the influence of historical legacies on present-day behaviors and attitudes. He emphasizes that cultural norms and values are not static, they can persist across generations and have far-reaching consequences. A new example of someone in real life who is an example to emulate and helps to understand the point made is Nelson Mandela. Born in a deeply divided South Africa, Mandela faced the harsh reality of racial discrimination and oppression under the apartheid regime. 
Despite this challenging environment, Mandela was deeply influenced by the values of his Kosa heritage and the principles of Ubuntu, the belief in interconnectedness, compassion, and humanity. As a young man, Mandela embraced the struggle against apartheid and joined the African National Congress, ANC, to fight for the rights of black South Africans. He became a key figure in the anti-apartheid movement, advocating nonviolent resistance and civil disobedience. However, as the apartheid government responded with increasing brutality, Mandela's commitment to nonviolence was challenged. He and other ANC leaders debated the best course of action to address the injustices they faced. Ultimately, the Sharpeville Massacre of 1960, in which peaceful protesters were killed by police, led Mandela and the ANC to form an armed wing to resist the oppressive regime. Mandela's decision to embrace armed struggle was not taken lightly. It reflected the deeply rooted cultural legacy of resistance and honor in the face of injustice. The Kosa tradition of standing up against oppression and defending one's dignity contributed to Mandela's resolve in the face of adversity. After spending 27 years in prison, Mandela emerged as a symbol of reconciliation and forgiveness. He embraced the principle of Ubuntu, promoting unity and understanding between South Africa's diverse racial and ethnic groups. His commitment to non-racialism and his ability to rise above bitterness and hatred after his release played a pivotal role in the peaceful transition to democracy in South Africa. Nelson Mandela's life exemplifies the impact of cultural legacies on an individual's actions and choices. His Kosa heritage and the cultural values of Ubuntu influenced his commitment to justice, his resilience in the face of oppression, and his ultimate pursuit of reconciliation and unity. Gladwell's exploration of Harlan's culture of honor and Nelson Mandela's story encourage readers to reflect on the cultural legacies that have shaped their own lives and communities. By understanding and appreciating the positive aspects of cultural heritage, individuals can draw strength from their values and traditions, using them as sources of inspiration and guidance in pursuing justice, reconciliation, and positive change. Mandela's example also underscores the importance of embracing compassion and empathy in addressing historical injustices and building a more harmonious and inclusive society. Chapter 7, The Ethnic Theory of Plane Crashes In Chapter 7 of Outliers, Malcolm Gladwell examines the factors that contribute to plane crashes and how cultural differences play a significant role in aviation safety. Gladwell explores the concept of power distance, the extent to which less powerful individuals defer to authority figures, and how it impacts communication and decision-making within cockpit crews. Gladwell presents the crash of Korean Air Flight 801 as a prime example. The plane crashed while attempting to land in Guam, resulting in the loss of many lives. The investigation revealed that the crew's deference to the captain, despite recognizing the dangerous situation, played a crucial role in the tragedy. The co-pilot and the flight engineer noticed the plane's descent path was incorrect, but hesitated to assert themselves due to the cultural norm of high power distance in Korean society. In some cultures, such as South Korea, there is a strong emphasis on respecting authority figures, and subordinates may be hesitant to challenge or question their superiors. This cultural trait can be detrimental in high-stakes environments like aviation, where open and assertive communication among cockpit crews is vital for ensuring safety. Gladwell contrasts this with cultures that have lower power distance, where individuals are more likely to question authority and express their opinions freely. These cultures tend to have more open communication and a more egalitarian approach to decision-making, which can enhance safety in critical situations. To further emphasize the point, Gladwell delves into the story of Avianca Flight 52, which crashed in New York. The crew, 
comprised of mostly Colombian nationals, encountered challenges related to fuel management and communication with air traffic control. The investigation revealed that the crew did not assertively communicate their fuel situation to air traffic control, partly due to the cultural norm of respecting authority figures and not wanting to appear demanding or confrontational. A new example of someone in real life who exemplifies the importance of assertive communication and challenging authority when necessary is Chesley Sully Sullenberger, the pilot who famously executed the miracle on the Hudson. In January 2009, Sully was piloting U.S. Airways Flight 1549 when a flock of birds struck both engines shortly after takeoff, resulting in the loss of engine power. With little time to make critical decisions, Sully quickly assessed the situation and concluded that it was impossible to reach any nearby airport safely. Recognizing the dire circumstances, he made the bold decision to land the plane on the Hudson River in New York City. Sully's skillful execution of the water landing, along with the swift and orderly evacuation of all passengers, saved the lives of everyone on board. The incident became known as the Miracle on the Hudson and earned Sully widespread praise and recognition as a hero. One crucial aspect of Sully's success was his ability to assertively communicate and challenge assumptions in a high-pressure situation. He realized that following standard emergency procedures would not lead to a safe outcome, and he decided to deviate from the norm to save lives. Sully's clear and decisive communication with the air traffic controllers and his crew contributed to the successful outcome of the emergency landing. Sully's example highlights the importance of assertive communication, regardless of cultural norms or hierarchical structures. In critical situations, effective communication and the willingness to challenge authority when necessary can be a matter of life and death. Gladwell's exploration of the ethnic theory of plane crashes and the example of Sully Sullenberger underscore the significance of open communication, assertiveness, and critical thinking in high-stakes environments. By learning from real-life examples like Sully, individuals can be inspired to embrace assertiveness and assert their perspectives when it matters most, ensuring safety, efficiency, and success in their respective fields. Chapter 8, Rice Patties and Math Tests In Chapter 8 of Outliers, Malcolm Gladwell explores the cultural attitudes towards learning and work ethic in different societies, focusing on the exceptional mathematical abilities displayed by East Asian students, particularly in countries like China, Japan, and South Korea. Gladwell draws a connection between the East Asian emphasis on hard work and dedication to education and the remarkable performance of their students in mathematics. He attributes their success not to inherent intellectual superiority but to the cultural legacy that values effort and perseverance in the pursuit of knowledge. One key cultural factor that contributes to East Asian students' mathematical prowess is the practice of rice farming. Traditional rice farming requires tremendous discipline, attention to detail, and a strong work ethic. The act of tending to rice paddies is repetitive, demanding, and time-consuming. The success of the entire crop hinges on the farmer's dedication to hard work and careful cultivation. This culture of hard work and the importance of effort is mirrored in East Asian attitudes towards education. Students in these societies are taught from a young age that success in academics comes through diligence and relentless practice. This perspective instills a growth mindset where individuals believe that their abilities can be developed through hard work and dedication rather than being fixed traits. To illustrate this point further, Gladwell examines the results of international math tests, such as the Trends in International Mathematics and Science Study, TIMSS. East Asian countries consistently perform at the top of these rankings, demonstrating their students' exceptional mathematical abilities. 
A new example of someone in real life who exemplifies the influence of cultural attitudes towards hard work and dedication to education is Shigeru Miyamoto, a renowned video game designer and creator of some of the most beloved and iconic video games in history. Miyamoto was born and raised in Japan, a country that places great emphasis on education and perseverance. His childhood was influenced by the post-World War II era, where Japan focused on rebuilding and advancement. During his youth, Miyamoto displayed a deep curiosity and interest in art and creativity. After joining Nintendo in the late 1970s, Miyamoto was instrumental in the development of numerous groundbreaking video games, including Donkey Kong, Super Mario Bros., The Legend of Zelda, and Pokemon. His work revolutionized the video game industry and earned him worldwide acclaim as a visionary game designer. Miyamoto's success can be attributed to his unwavering dedication to creativity and the pursuit of excellence. He embraced the ethos of hard work and perseverance instilled in him by his cultural upbringing. He approached game design as a form of art, and his attention to detail and commitment to innovative gameplay set him apart as a true pioneer in the field. The example of Shigeru Miyamoto reinforces Gladwell's argument that cultural attitudes towards hard work and education can significantly impact an individual's achievements. Miyamoto's success as a game designer and the cultural context in which he grew up demonstrate the power of a growth mindset and the belief in the transformative power of effort and dedication. As readers contemplate the influence of cultural legacies on attitudes towards education and work, they can draw inspiration from figures like Shigeru Miyamoto. Embracing the values of diligence, perseverance, and a growth mindset can empower individuals to overcome challenges, foster creativity, and achieve greatness in their chosen endeavors. Chapter 9. Merida's Bargain In the final chapter of Outliers, Malcolm Gladwell explores the education system and the opportunity gap, focusing on the experiences of low-income students and the challenges they face in pursuing academic success. Gladwell introduces the story of Marita, a student attending a KIPP, Knowledge is Power program, school, which provides extended learning opportunities to underprivileged children. Marita's experience at the KIPP school highlights the importance of extended learning time and the significant impact it can have on a student's academic achievements. The KIPP program's approach involves longer school days, Saturday classes, and a shorter summer break to ensure that students receive ample time for learning and development. Gladwell emphasizes that students from low-income backgrounds often face an opportunity gap compared to their more affluent peers. While privileged students have access to resources like tutoring, extracurricular activities, and summer programs, their less fortunate counterparts often lack similar opportunities. This disparity can lead to a significant learning loss over time, perpetuating the achievement gap between the two groups. The extended learning time provided by the KIPP program addresses this opportunity gap by ensuring that students like Marita have more time for instruction, practice, and engagement in various educational activities. The program's commitment to empowering students through education and providing them with the tools they need to succeed becomes evident through Marita's story. Gladwell suggests that offering students from disadvantaged backgrounds the same level of opportunities and access to extended learning time can be a crucial step in narrowing the achievement gap and fostering academic success. A new example of someone in real life who exemplifies the power of extended learning opportunities and overcoming the opportunity gap is Jeffrey Canada, the founder of the Harlem Children's Zone, HCZ, in New York City. Growing up in the South Bronx, Jeffrey Canada witnessed the challenges faced by children in underprivileged communities. After graduating from college, Canada was determined to make a difference and provide children from low-income neighborhoods with the support and opportunities they needed to succeed. In 1970, Canada founded HCZ, 
a comprehensive community-based organization dedicated to improving the lives of children and families in Harlem. The HCZ's approach involves a combination of education, social services, and community engagement, with a focus on breaking the cycle of generational poverty. One of the core components of the HCZ's approach is the Promise Academy Charter Schools, which provide extended learning time and a nurturing environment for students. The schools offer longer school days, weekend classes, and summer programs, ensuring that students have access to continuous learning opportunities. The results of Jeffrey Canada's efforts have been remarkable. The Promise Academy charter schools have consistently outperformed nearby public schools, with significantly higher graduation rates and college enrollment rates for their students. Canada's commitment to closing the opportunity gap and empowering children from low-income communities has been recognized and praised by educators and policymakers alike. Jeffrey Canada's example reinforces Gladwell's argument about the transformative impact of extended learning opportunities on academic achievement. By providing students with additional time for learning and support, individuals like Jeffrey Canada and programs like the Harlem Children's Zone can help level the playing field and equip children from disadvantaged backgrounds with the tools they need to succeed. As readers reflect on the importance of addressing the opportunity gap in education, they can draw inspiration from figures like Jeffrey Canada and organizations like the Harlem Children's Zone. Embracing the idea of extended learning time and providing equal access to educational resources can pave the way for a more equitable and inclusive education system, fostering academic success for all students, regardless of their socioeconomic backgrounds. In Outliers, Malcolm Gladwell takes readers on a thought-provoking journey, challenging traditional notions of success and greatness. Throughout the book, Gladwell emphasizes that success is not solely determined by individual talent or inherent abilities. Instead, it is shaped by a myriad of factors, including cultural legacies, opportunities, and the collective support of communities. The major takeaway from Outliers is that greatness is a product of circumstance, effort, and opportunity. Gladwell's exploration of the 10,000-hour rule emphasizes the power of deliberate practice and dedication in achieving mastery in any field. He emphasizes that talent alone is not enough. It is the consistent and focused effort that propels individuals towards excellence. Furthermore, Gladwell underscores the influence of cultural legacies on individual journeys to success. He reveals how cultural attitudes towards hard work, education, and authority shape behaviors and outcomes. Understanding and embracing one's cultural heritage can provide valuable insights and strength in pursuing aspirations. Moreover, Outliers sheds light on the opportunity gap that exists in society, particularly in education. The book highlights the transformative impact of extended learning opportunities and the importance of providing equal access to resources and support, especially for those from underprivileged backgrounds. As readers reflect on outliers, they are encouraged to adopt a growth mindset and recognize that greatness is attainable with dedication and perseverance. They can draw inspiration from the real-life examples presented in the book, such as the exceptional achievements of individuals like Bill Gates, Serena Williams, and Jeffrey Canada. In moving forward, Readers can strive to create environments that nurture talent, dedication, and provide equal access to opportunities. Embracing one's unique cultural heritage, valuing hard work, and seeking additional learning opportunities can be transformative in pursuing personal and collective success. Ultimately, Outliers invites readers to challenge conventional wisdom and consider the multifaceted nature of success. By understanding the diverse factors that shape greatness, individuals can embark on their own unique journeys, empowered with the knowledge that success is within reach through continuous effort, embracing opportunities, and valuing their cultural legacies.